The Young Women's Christian Association of the Philippines is a private, non-stop, non-profit, non-sectarian, service-oriented, and charitable organization which was founded in 1948. YWCA aims to develop the physical, social, intellectual, moral, and spiritual well-being of women and girls in accordance with the Christian ideals for which the movement is deeply rooted. The goal of the YWCA are to bring about quality of life, to develop women as change leaders and members in body, mind, and spirit, to engage in selfless Christian service, and to empower women and girls in dynamic partnership with men and service groups toward total transformation. The Young Women's Christian Association is founded in 1855 by Emma Roberts and Lady Mary Jane Kenyard. These two agreed to consolidate their efforts for a common cause during the Crimean War. In the Philippines, a similar interest group, the Time Investment Club, founded in 1921 under the leadership of Mrs. Felicissima Valcosa Barza, became the nucleus of the YWCA movement in the country. The first YWCA was officially organized in October 1926, which is the YWCA of Manila. Its first honorary president was Mrs. Aurora A. Castle. This was followed by the organization of YWCAs of Baguio and San Pablo, thus the need to have a national organization. Dr. Jose Fajara Martinez was the first chairperson of the provisional board who worked on the establishment of the YWCA of the Philippines. And on February 14, 1948, the YWCA of the Philippines was formally created with Dr. Flora Ilagan as the first national president. The YWCA of the Philippines was admitted as a corresponding member of the World YWCA during the World Council meeting in Anqiao, China in 1948 and was taken in as an active member at the World Council meeting in Beirut, Lebanon in 1951. It is linked with other national YWCA in about 100 countries around the world through the World YWCA whose headquarters is in Geneva, Switzerland. The YWCA is at work in the Philippines through groups such as YWATS, who is elementary school girls, Y teens organized in secondary school, student Y organized in colleges and universities, young professional and the adult YWATS. There is also the Community Youth Club, whose members either be in school or out of school. The YWC of the Philippines has over 20 local associations all over the country and serves over 50,000 people through these local associations. Local Association from Northern Luzon Local Association from Southern Luzon Local Association from Visayas Region and Local Association from Mindanao. YWCA leadership headed by Mrs. Lilia A. Farinas, National President, Ms. Marla May A. Baez, National Youth Coordinating or NYCC President, and Mrs. Narisa B. Riena, National Executive Director. YWCA of the Philippines Legal Mandate Affiliated with World YWCA Programs and services are accredited by the Department of Social and Welfare and Development. We partner with other organizations like YMCA, GSP, NCWP, Renewable Energy Coalition, Filcadsa, FAWA Philippines. Our local association partner with DepEd, CSWDO, and other entities. YWCA pioneered in health and recreation, introduction of physical education in the school curriculum, adult education, community center, camping for girls, youth work, residents, and ecumenical movement. Here are the YWCA strategic actions and accomplishments.
after any move or plan to do Depression is the largest cause of disability worldwide. At worst, depression can lead to suicide. In humanitarian emergencies, one in five people are affected by depression and anxiety. Depression and anxiety lead to a global economic loss of one trillion US dollars per year. On average, just 3% of government health budgets is invested in mental health. Depression can be prevented and treated at relatively low cost. Treatment usually involves talking therapy or antidepressant medication or both. If you think you have depression, talk to someone you trust. Seek professional help. Depression. Let's talk. And uh, welcome for the continuation of the Y Talk series entitled Understanding the Philippine Mental Health Law, also known as the Republic Act 11036 with the hashtag Why Cares for You. For those who are unable to join us last September on the discussion of the Philippine Mental Health Law Part 1, you may visit and watch the posted video on YWCA of the Philippines Facebook page. Again, this webinar session's objective is to provide awareness and better understanding of the Philippine mental health law to help uh, women, young women, the community, and stakeholders to be empowered through this law. I am Jessica DeBotton, and I will be your host this afternoon. Before we proceed, let me remind everyone uh, just a few rules in order for us to have a pleasant experience for the duration of the forum. First, please set your microphones on mute. 
Second, please turn off your cameras. And uh, third, please be advised that this session is being recorded for documentation purposes. And lastly, if you have any question, you may use the chat feature so that we can acknowledge you. And to start, let us listen to a doxology offered by Ms. Nina Krista Mif Haro, Young Women National Council member and a three-time de defending champion, Tawag ng Tanghalan sa Showtime, to be followed by the Philippine National Anthem.
Bansang Awit ng Pilipinas. program, uh, we are pleased to have Ms. Marla May Baez, President of the National Youth Coordinating Council, to deliver her welcome remarks. To our National Executive Director, Ms. Nariza Liana, our Vice President for Administration, Ms. Maria Corazon Francisco, our Resource Person, Attorney J.B. Gayona, our Moderator, Ms. Marie Franz Gavino, and to all of you participants here today, good afternoon. The Young Women's Christian Association, true to its purpose to develop women volunteers in all ages in the movement and goal to empower women and girls in dynamic partnership with men and service groups towards total transformation, has been continuously providing means and ways to educate young women and girls in vital issues that we are currently facing. One of the prevailing issues that we have observed amidst this pandemic is mental health. And today, in accordance with our Why Talk series, we will be hosting our part two for our topic, Understanding the Philippine Mental Health Law, or RA-11036. Rest assured that this platform, this talk, is your safe space. And I hope that each and every one of us will be able to take a piece of our learning from today's talk and apply it in our daily lives. With this, I am very much honored to welcome you all to this forum. Good afternoon again. Thank you so much, Miss Marla, for your warm greetings. And it is also my privilege to call on the National Executive Director of the YWCA Philippines for the acknowledgement of our guests and participants and to properly introduce our resource person or uh, speaker for today, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Nerisa Bilena. Thank you, Jessica. Blessed afternoon to all. We are now on our last forum on our mental health topic in observance of World Mental Health Day happening this Saturday. This forum, which is part of the Y Talk series and made possible by the Global and Local Affairs Committee of the YWCA of the Philippines and the National Youth Coordinating Council, of the association with support from the World YWCA COVID-19 Response Fund, would like to thank you all for attending this afternoon's activity. We are delighted to thank you all. And we are also would like to acknowledge those who are, whom we have been, who are, who are joining us since day one or September 23 for our first part, part one of the Mental Health Act and last, um, September 25, and I think some of you became my FB friends. All right. Keep liking our YWCA page, and with, of which the link will be provided later in the chat box. Some have registered to become members of the YWCA, and we thank you so much. And we look forward to more activities with you online and offline. The latter, we are praying since we really have good and exciting activities and programs when these pandemic restrictions is lifted. 
For my task this afternoon, I would like to acknowledge the presence of our guests and participants. I will be starting off with the members of the National Council, headed by our National President, Ms. Lea Parinas, our Vice President for Administration and Management, Maria Corazon M. Francisco. We have with us our immediate past National President and Chairperson of the Council of Past National Presidents, Dr. Baby Ortiz. Our Public Relations Officer, Melody Marfil. Of course, earlier you've heard our NYCC President and our MC, Ms. Jessica De Boton, National Council Member. Another National Council Member is Ms. Nina Haro, who earlier sang the doxology. We have the Global and Local Affairs Committee, headed by Chairperson Rebegius Obicomo who is also uh, the president of the YWCF Quezon City District 3. And with our members, Marcia Picomo and Ms. Rachel De La Cruz. I think uh, the chairperson of the membership and collection policy, Dr. Rosemary Conlu, will be joining us this afternoon also. We would like also to acknowledge the national president of the National Federation of Women's Club of the Philippines, also a YWCA associate member, Mrs. Linda P. Gonzalez. We have local associations uh, coming from YWCA of Makati, YWCA of Marikina, Quezon City, Dagupan, Roa City, and Iloilo. And also we have Ms. Marie France Gavino, our speaker in the second online forum, which will be introduced properly. She will be uh, having a different hat this afternoon. Of course, we would like to acknowledge the following organizations, schools, and government institutions. Our Lady of Fatima University, Centro Escolar University, St. Luke's Medical Center, PICPA, I think this is the association of um, different groups of psychologists, Aurora Chapter, Bye Bye City Senior High School, ACC Hypermart Corporation, New Kabala National High School Senior High Essentia Medical Group Incorporated, BM Consuni Incorporated, Cebu City Medical Center, University of the Cordilleras, Visaya State University, University of Caloocan City, Santa Lucia Catholic School, St. Louis University, Department of Budget and Management, NCR, Malawi Elementary School, Dr. Celedonio A. Salvador Elementary School, Bukid Non State University, Dep Ed Kalookan, Torres High School, Manila, Batanga State University, Abra Valley Colleges, Quezon National High School, Buenlag National High School, Barcada Contra Droga, Kalashaw Chapter, University of Makati, Philippine Association of Social Workers Incorporated, Ilocos Chapter, Maripipi National Vocational School, DepEd SDO Pangasinan, Cavite State University, Indang Main Campus, Northern Luzon Philippine State Colleges, Mariano Marcos the Memorial Hospitals, Ilocos Training and Regional Medical Center, University of Batangas, of course, Hill State Psychological Clinic, St. Louis University, and Negros Oriental State University, and lastly, Amara Counseling and Training Center. So those are the list of those who have participated. In. So my main task, our resource speaker for those who were not able to join us last September 23 is a pride and joy of the YWCA of the Philippines. Attorney J.B. Rosel Goko Gayona graduated from Sandena College Bachelor's of Law and admitted to the legal profession in 2007. She is a licensed and certified human resource professional and safety officer too. Attorney Gayona was recently promoted as Associate Director, Human Resource, Employee Relations and Legal Compliance of Colabera Philippines. Congratulations, JB. Colabera Philippines is a subsidiary of Colabera Incorporated, a global workforce solution an IT service provider with 16,000 plus professionals working across 70 plus offices in 10 countries. With her headquarters is in Basking Ridge, New Jersey. In the Philippines, they have over 2,500 employees in their offices in Makati and Cebu City. 
So such a big uh, task for JD now that she's assistant director. Prior to her appointment, Attorney Gayona was company head legal counsel, where she handles the four areas of operation legal, which includes contract review, compliance, dollar and set compliances, human resource for internal employees, and employees' relations for employees deployed at client site. In the YWCA, JD, as we finally called her, holds the distinction of being the first young woman who was elected in a vice president position in the 17-member National Council, the highest policy-making body of the YWCA of the Philippines with over 20 local associations in the country. JD was first elected president of the NYCC, the youth arm of the association, which earned her a seat in the council and was later elected as treasurer during her first term in 2010 to 2012 and vice president for program in 2012 to 2014. JV served in various committees of the association. She also represented the association in the Crime Prevention Conference in Malaysia in 2013 and was one of the worldwide WCA delegate in the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women, UNCSW, in New York in 2017. She is currently a member of the Legal and Ethics Committee and the Disaster Management Committee of the association. Truly an inspiration to many young women and a warrior who is ready to serve. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome attorney J.B. Rosell Popo Gayona. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you once again for um, joining us in this afternoon session, the part two of our discussion on um, Philippine Mental Health Act. So um, two weeks ago, We've already discussed the basics of this Philippine Mental Health Act, who are the key persons um, involved in the implementation of this act. We have the service user, we have the legal representatives, we have the supporters, we have the mental health care professionals. We also discussed about the rights available to each person. So now in this afternoon session for the part two, we will discuss what are the services available in relation to this Philippine Mental Health Act. We discuss din natin yung mental health care sa educational institution and of course sa workplace. So let's begin. Um, what are the services available? So in mental health services at the community level, Ano yung involved dito? So, sa barangay level or sa city, sa municipality, this involves yung wellness promotion, prevention, peer support, livelihood and employment, and other community support services. Yung ibang barangay, what they do um, in wellness promotion, meron silang, for example, uh, nag-organize ng pazumba, meron yung um, nagpapaliga sa basketball, or um, for example, meron din yung nagkakaroon ng mga cleanliness drive kasi nga syempre malaki rin yung epekto nung, nung paligid natin sa ating mental health. And meron din yung mga nag-offer ng mga livelihood, mga skills training, and iba pang uh, paraan para mapakita ng community yung uh, suporta niya to a development or wellness promotion ng kanilang buong komunidad, no? Then, we also have this community-based mental health care facility. This involves establishment of mental health care facilities in provinces, cities, cluster of municipalities. Ang example nito, yung mga community mental health center, outpatient care center, halfway houses, and crisis center. Um, as mentioned, this IRR was just recently passed by the government. So basically, this is pre-COVID. Um, most barangay naman, um, they already have the barangay healthcare um, facility or LGU. However, yung sa aspeto ng mental health care, which is yung kung ano anong mga, mga policies and programs, sa palagi ko right now, while it is a priority, mas abala pa sila sa 
um, pagsumpo or pag-assist doon sa mga um, COVID cases. So, as mentioned din last time, baby steps ano, until full implementation of this community-based mental health care facility. But asahan natin in the years to come until magkaroon ng 100% realization itong mga uh, community-based mental health care facility para maging affordable and accessible for everyone yung ating mga services. Uh, kahit sama rin sa, ano, sa IRR, yung requirement na magkaroon ng drug screening services. So, each local health care facility must likewise be capable of conducting drug screening either through laboratory exam, use of risk assessment skills, and screening questionnaires. Right now kasi, yung mga drug screening services, uh, we pay for it either um, part of pre-employment or uh, pag-renew ng lisensya. But uh, once this is available in every local healthcare facility, mas marami yung mga bebenepisyo dito. Kasi nga, uh, may ensure na drug-free community. So, yung kasama yun sa paraan ng pangangalaga natin sa ating mental health. No? Walang um, drug addiction. Now, uh, isang bagay na pinagdiinan or binigyan ng pansin as well dito sa IR are yung, ano, yung suicide prevention. Sabi dito, there must be a mechanism for suicide intervention, prevention and response strategies with focus on concerns of youth. So based dito, it appears na the suicide rate mas prevalent o mas um, marami sa ating mga kabataan. Which is why, hinikayat nila na mag-set up ng 24-7 hotline. And bilang tugon dito sa panawagan nitong IRR, yung National Center for Mental Health, nilaunch nga nila yung 24-7 crisis hotline. Or yung uh, binanggit natin last time na um, itong crisis hotline na ito, uh, this is manned by mental health care um, professionals na open 24 hours, 7 days a week. So, nandito yung numbers, 0917-899-8727-989-8727. So, para mas madaling matandaan, usap yung last part. No? So, so, sa cellphone, di ba, merong number, may letter. So, 0917-899-USAP. 989-USAP. Minsan kasi, uh, while may mga programa ganito or may mga available na facilities like this 24-7 crisis hotline, ang problema, hindi naman lahat nakakaalam na, na nag-exist itong hotline na to. So siguro, kailangan din ng public awareness. We can also help by by sharing no, this information na meron ng suicide prevention hotline or this 24-7 hotline na sinet up ang ating gobyerno to assist doon sa ating mga um, kababayan na merong um, pinagdadaanan and yung gusto nila kung may makausap sila, may makinig kasi minsan naman talaga um, malaking bagay na yung someone's listening to you not necessarily um, may in-expect kang um, payo o advice but just having someone to listen to you is a, is a big help already and kadalasan to avoid or yung misconception na ayaw rin natin syempre na mahusgahan. So, mas pinipili natin yung third party or yung neutral party. And dito sa hotline na to, mas maganda kasi mental health care professional yung mag a sa atin, yung mga ikinig sa atin. Kung meron mang um, uh, red flag o merong indicator of, for example, depression or any mental health concern, mas madali ma-address, magkakaroon ng ng um, follow through you know? so this is the hotline number 24 7 crisis hotline uh is shared din naman namin so at least you can share the information now what are the components of this national suicide prevention strategy number one yung emergency mental health care for persons in suicide crisis situation Second is the mainstreaming of suicide prevention in public health condition and other priority health program, katulad ng HIV. 
um, yung mga non-communicable disease sa, sa school, sa workplace, disaster areas. Uh, kailangan din ng training of first responder, health professionals, and volunteers para ma-recognize yung suicidal behavior. So, minsan nga kasi, di ba, sabi nga nila, um, you may be smiling, but deep inside pala meron pinagdadaanan. And usually, um, people who commit suicide, hindi mo agad ma- ma- makikita or madidetect na may tendency pala siyang mag-commit ng suicide. Kadalasan, after the fact, after nangyari, parang hindi kadalasan sa pamilya, wala naman din yung nakakahalata uh, o nakakaramdam na may pinagdadaanan na ganun yung isang individual. So dito, kailangan ng, ano, ng skill, kailangan ng training to recognize yung uh, ano ba yung mga suicidal behavior. Uh, so kailangan din ng ano, counseling like yung ating um, crisis hotline. And of course, uh, kailangan din mag-provide ng support doon sa mga naulila ng 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 na pamilya nung taong nag, nag-commit ng suicide. Sabi nga natin, di ba, sa mental health, kasama sa isang factor yung psychosocial, yung how we react as well to the events na nangyayari sa buhay natin. So, yung mga naulila, kailangan din nila ng assistance to cope up with, with what happened sa kapamilya nila. Responsible media reporting and handling of suicide events. Establishing a system of suicide surveillance by 24-7 hotlines. Um, sabi dito, uh, yung DOH, they will develop policies and guidelines on suicide prevention strategy. And dapat, hindi lang siya policy, hindi lang siya guideline. But there must be a link to actual support services. no? Hindi lang tayo dito um, yung puro policy o issuances. Kailangan merong actual na na link o merong may merong policy, merong programa na may implementasyon. And uh, ayun nga, ang naatasan dito to have this uh, implemented pag-craft ng policy yung ating Department of Health. Currently, ang nilalabas pa lang nilang um, guideline is yung sa IRR. So, I'm sure itong sa suicide prevention strategy, they will um, release more informational materials no, on, on this and uh, other support services. Kasi nga, sabi ko nga, yung hotline, um, it was just uh, launched to, to address the uh, need na sinasabi nitong IRR. So, I'm sure once na magkaroon ng opportunity and medyo mag na yung concerns natin with, with uh, COVID, mas matututukan ng gobyerno, ng Department of Health, yung ating mental health care facilities and ano, support Now, um, this integration of mental health in educational system, ang kailangan dito nire-require yung i-introduce yung mental health sa lahat ng antas no, ng, ng edukasyon. Pero ang requirement, dapat age-appropriate yung content. So halimbawa, um, sa mga bata, magsisimula yan sa wellness promotion. Pagkain ng tamang pagkain ni gulay, prutas, pag-exercise. Kung bata, hindi mo naman pwedeng um, in relation to mental health, discussan mo ng tungkol sa suicide o, o halimbawa depression. So, hindi na mo pwede yung mga technical terms. Dapat, syempre, um, age-appropriate yung, yung content nung i, kapag inintroduce mo siya sa, in each uh, educational level. Na requirement din na yung psychiatry and neurology, yung subjects na to, be required na siya sa mga medical and health courses. Kasi diba nabanggit nga natin yung mental health care, uh, mayroon tatlong aspeto, psychiatric, neurology, and psychosocial. So, mahalaga na itong mga subjects na to, hindi na siya optional, but um, required na siya in all medical and allied health courses. Um, educational institution, likewise, kailangan nila mag-develop ng policies and programs for students, educators, and employees 
designed to raise awareness on mental health issues. Yung ma-identify and provide support and services for individuals at risk. I-facilitate yung access, including yung referral mechanism of individuals with mental health condition to treatment and psychosocial support. So lahat ng public and private educational institution, kailangan magkaroon ng... Um, ng mental health professionals sa sa ano sa eskwelahan usually uh, meron yung uh, guidance center so meron naman psychologists and all but of course hindi naman lahat ng public uh, educational institution meron ito so kung magkakaroon ng ng ito requirement na to um, kailangan mag-alat din ng gobyerno ng budget para makapag no, sa plantilla ng ng mga eskwelahan na public schools for um, hiring itong mental health professional para sabi nga natin ang aim ng IRR to have the mental health care facilities and services be readily accessible and sa ano and of course yung yung cost wise hindi mabigat sa um, mga mamamayan so by having it available as well sa mga education institution both public and private malaki yung maitutulong nito no because at the early onset nung 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 mga um, symptoms or nung mga red red flags yung mga indicators ma-address since laging merong accessible access to mental health professionals um now we move on to ano to the workplace so mental health care uh, so workplace so last december uh no, last february 11 2020 sorry so last february 11 2020 um dolly issued uh department order number 208 this guidelines for the implementation of mental health workplace policies and programs for the private sector so ang applicability nito sa lahat ng workplaces and establishments in the formal sector um, including those which which deploy um, OFWs so itong Dole Department Order number 208 applicable lamang ito sa private sector um, dito sa department order na to um, sabi niya it is mandatory for all workplaces and establishments to formulate a mental health workplace policy and program na yung policy and program kailangan it must raise awareness mag prevent ng stigma and discrimination uh, provide support to workers who are at risk and or with mental health condition and facilitate access to medical health services so how do you raise awareness of course magkakaroon ng orientation uh, sa workplace and magpo-provide ka ng, um, ng support as well na doon sa mga empleyado na you consider as at risk or uh, sinasabi nga with mental health condition. Promote workers' well-being towards healthy and productive lives. So, kasama dito yung pagkakaroon ng mga employee engagement activities. Uh, kailangan to ensure na merong work-life um balance malaking bagay yon so like sa amin what we do we have a health bulletin um, sometimes it contains reminders na ano yung uh, mga for example eating healthy and uh, nutritious food or minsan yung simple reminder ng um, ergonomics like um, how to avoid yung ano ng carpal tunnel or um, in between the uh, work from home so laging nakaharap sa computer somehow every time like every hour you, you stretch out and all kasi hindi naman talaga maganda yung prolonged seating no? so kasama yon yung workers well being towards healthy and productive lives um, this mental health policy and program, it must be jointly prepared by the management and workers' representatives and be made an integral part of the company's occupational safety and health policy and program. 
So, what we did sa amin, uh, meron kasi kaming Occupational Safety and Health Committee. And the committee is composed of um, both management and um, mga empleyado. So, may rank and file, may, may manager, aside from the the safety officer. No? No, para lahat uh, represented in, in crafting the, the policy. And this uh, policy and program, it must be properly coordinated, monitored, and regularly reviewed and updated as necessary for its effective implementation. So, kung halimbawa yung HR ng isang company, kailangan ng, ng assistance kung paano mag-come up with this workplace policy and program, they can ask help from, from the DOLE, from the OH, and other organizations na like uh, Psychological Association of the Philippines, Philippine Psychiatric Association. So, ito, yung mga naka-list naka down dito sa, sa um, department order. Kasi syempre, um, mahirap din naman mag-formulate ng policy and program na hindi mo naman talaga actually naiintindihan. Baka mamaya uh, lugar na makatulong, mas lalong maka, maka sama pa. So, mas mabuti na um, carefully drafted, uh, sabi nga, properly coordinated and monitored. And kailangan din, nire-review. Baka mamaya outdated na yung, yung policy and program. Hindi na siya hindi na siya nababagay doon sa current working situation. Like, for example, if the workplace policy and program naka-pattern siya during the time that uh, everyone's reporting at the office, baka kailangan ng revision or addition to the to the provisions ng, ng, ng policy and program since, uh, for example, lahat ng empleyado naka-work from home due to this ano, pandemic. So, kailangan it must suit the, the needs of the employees in the company. Now, what are the components and implementation strategies of the mental health workplace policy and program? Number one, advocacy, information, education, and training. So, all workers should be provided with basic information and education on mental health. So, kasama sa basic information and education, yung understanding mental health and its impact in the workplace and the workforce, yung identification and the management of mental health problem, and of course, yung salient features nitong Mental Health Act and its uh, implementing rules and regulations with emphasis on the rights, no? the rights ng nung service user, and of course, yung consent, yung sinabi nga natin, informed consent. And uh, last, yung confidentiality of all information or medical records of a worker with mental health condition. Sabi rin ng ano, Department of Labor and Employment, uh, employers are encouraged to extend advocacy, information, education, and training activities to the workers, families, and communities. So, hindi lang siya sa empleyado, kundi kasama yung pati yung pamilya through their uh, corporate social responsibility program. Usually, um, private companies naman meron um, integrated na na corporate social responsibility and usually um, like sa amin, what we did before uh, of course yung mga family day um, malaking bagay yun kasi um, you give families the chance to enjoy and just really you know uh, form a strong bond among among themselves and um, kailangan din kasi itong mga CSR program yung approach mo is um mag-avoid ka ng stigma and discrimination and of course, para mas lalo pong maintindihan yung condition or yung kalagayan ng isang empleyado na may mental health condition and of course, yung big support group nun, aside from the workplace syempre, yung family, so hindi lang sa empleyado but involvement as well of the family and and yung community so malaking, malaking bagay yun ano? um, yung OSH personnel, so ano yung OSH? Occupational Safety and Health Personnel. And yung HR, kailangan din mag-undergo ng capacity building 
on identification, recognition of psychosocial hazard, and management of mental health problem. Likewise, kung merong capacity building, kailangan din ng training no, of workers and program implementers in promoting and advocating mental health in the workplace. And ito, pwedeng i-coordinate sa Department of Health or sa National Center for Mental Health no, or sa ibang mental health service providers. Now, another component is the promotion and enhancement of workers' well-being to have healthy and productive lives through the following recommendation. Una, um, kailangan i-increase yung workers' awareness on mental health and other common conditions like depression, anxiety, and substance abuse including alcohol. So, how can this be done? Ang sabi dito, distributing leaflets, workshops, and posters. But sabi ko nga, everyone naman, usually, um, merong email. So, pwede magkaroon ng email blast. Or sa workplace, merong um, posters, no? Na naka, makikita yung readily, ano, like, can be sa pantry or sa hallway. Um, any place na, na mas madalas or visible sa ating mga empleyado. Kailangan din ng promotion ng healthy lifestyle and work-life balance, no? Um, sa amin, like last week, we had the Employee Appreciation Week. So, every day we have um, activities. Uh, like, first day, uh, since all of us are working from home, ang naging activity is to dress up formal, formal dress up. And then, during the parang call every morning uh, with video on, you need to take pictures. So at least it's a feel good na for, for, parang for a change, no? may experience mo ulit yung how it's like preparing to, to go to work ng talagang naka-formal naka or naka-business attire. And then yung second day, I think um, we have this um, parang crazy mask. So, um, Mag, nagkaroon ng parang contest then how will you be so creative in in ano in uh, designing your mask fanciest mask ganyan. nagkaroon din kami ng parang um, contest on a video in a tiktok parang tiktok ala tiktok style video so and meron din quiz night so na, a chance to get together at least so ka, somehow kahit na work from home no there's a balance no a lifestyle na na pinopromote natin yung work life balance and then this uh, identification and management of work related stress and stressors including interpersonal issues with superiors subordinates co-employees clients and customers so ito sa palagi ko um this is one responsibility as well of the hr no, ano-ano yung mga work-related stress, ano yung paano mo i-address yung mga interpersonal issues, hindi naman lahat sa, sa loob ng opisina o ng workplace, ano, magkakasundo yung mga magkaka-opisina, hindi naman lahat, maganda ang relasyon ng boss at saka ng empleyado. So, um, kailangan, no? Um, quick then and alert yung, yung HR sa mga ganitong indicators para mas madaling ma, uh, ma-address yung ganitong mga concerns sa workplace. Then, effective management of changes in the work organization and utilization of human resources system. So, ano yung nandito yung ano, uh, kasama dito yung review ng workload, baka yung empleyado um, nag-patong-patong uh, na yung task niya or naka-assign na ng mga task na, na hindi na na niya sakop. Yung tipong um, ang work hours is until um, 5 o'clock only but yung concerns kulang na sa maghapon, no? If the if the workload is too much, so ano rin yung burnout, no? Sa akin, um, since I handle um, three teams, no? Um, what I usually do doon sa aking employee relations team, so this, uh, this team kasi, it's composed of uh, young individuals. No? So, yung, um, yung um, 
team composition namin, mga bata pa sila. So sometimes they're so energetic and passionate about work. Kadalasan, kahit na na um, na weekend nagre-reply sa mga emails or sometimes uh, even sa workday um, they reply beyond the uh, office hours. So sabi ko sa kanila um, to prevent burnout you must ano you must uh, put a limit if for example ang sa amin kasi ang work hours is 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, if you want to still work beyond 7 p.m. but at least put a cut off be it 8 o'clock 8.30 and then, kinabukas na ulit. Anyway, sa akin naman kasi, ang um, isang bagay, if it's urgent, people will call you. No, people will text you. But, um, you must uh, contain yourself from from doing work beyond those time. Bigyan mo rin yung sarili mo ng, ng chance na magpahinga. Yung utak natin, kailangan din yung magpahinga. No, free your, your mind from that. And of course, pag weekend, no, kasi syempre, work from home nga. So, pa, paano mo pa, excuse, paano mo pa madidistinguish yung, um, yung uh, weekday sa weekend? So, you can do an activity during weekends na, na ano, na hindi mo ginagawa pag, pag weekday. Like, sa case ko, um, Friday night pa lang, I welcome the weekend with, ano, k-drama. So, <laughs> So until Sunday I do I do that and of course yung mga chores sa bahay. So so kahit pa paano na distinguish ko pa rin ano yung ano ano yung yung weekday at ano yung weekend no. So marami namang ways eh, to to address the ano the burnout um yung siguro uh, kasama din dito yung you can do meetups with your friends uh, via Zoom or sometimes Facebook uh, sa Facebook group you can do calls so malaking bagay yon na somehow uh, we adjust using technology and how we can do socialization pa rin sa ano, sa mga days na off days natin sa trabaho So, kasama din yung establishment of mental health programs to support workers. So, sabi nga, recreational activities. No? Uh, workers Achievements and Efforts Recognition Program. Sa amin, what we have uh, monthly is this town hall. So, lahat ng mga performers or mga um, uh, pakitang gilas for the month, meron award and ano, usually meron Maybe in a GC. Aside from the certificate, or sometimes we request for a um, trophy. Now, because we are uh, working from home, what we did, um, we have a weekly shout out. For example, the about yung target or merong accomplishment, we do a weekly shout out aside from the monthly um, wrap up, parang ganong wrap up report. So, Ang prices naman namin, uh, we've tied up with uh, Food Panda. So, may vouchers din. So, somehow, kahit pa paano, um, adjustment on how we will recognize the workers, no? employees' achievement. Uh, paano din may incentivize sila. Somehow, diba? masaya rin naman yung makatanggap ka, isipin mo, Food Panda voucher. Yung actually last week, uh, when we had that employee appreciation week, so our team won the the video. Uh, we are 30 in the team. So what we did, nagkaroon kami ng um, parang ano, ng parang campaign video on the um, healthcare protocol like uh, paggamit ng alcohol, yung proper disposal ng mask, yung pag uh, sanitize ng mga ng mga packages, um, yung tamang pag-sneeze, pag-ubo, so yung mga mga ganun. And then, parang yung ginamit naming uh, music, uh, yung we're all in this together. So, dito sa sa ano, sa sa exercise na yun, no? or sa contest na yun, ang price lang naman na binigay namin, 1,000 pesos, and of course, yung bragging rights. Pero yung mga bata, yung mga team members ko, sabi ko nga, 
iba yung energy, iba yung passion. And makikita mo talaga na masaya sila um, doing that. So, mal- ma- malaking bagay yun, no? Yung, yung mga ganong activities. Um, needed then of course, yung psychosocial support in management of disaster and extreme like events. Um, capacity building of managers and HR personnel in the identification and management of workers with mental health problems and other programs and activities as may be recommended by the Occupational Safety and Health Committee deemed necessary to promote and sustain the well-being of the workers. Now, another component is the social policy. What are these uh, non-discriminatory policies and practices? So, sabi dito, di ba, may right yung um, service user against um, discrimination and stigmatization. So, dito, uh, there shall be no discrimination in any form against employees no, who are at risk of developing or those who are found to have mental health condition. So, hindi sila dapat ma-discriminate against hiring, promotion, and other benefits of employment because of their condition. Uh, provided, however, so sabi naman dito, um, uh, yung condition shall not interfere with the employee's performance of their duty. Or it must not unduly uh, affect his own safety or that of his co-workers, clients, and, the, and of course the public. So, sabi nga, uh, while this is uh, the ideal setup, no discrimination in terms of hiring, promotion, and other benefits, um, kailangan din, of course, hindi naman to the point na uh, makaka-apekto doon sa performance ng empleyado, ng trabaho, or yung mga deliverable sa, sa work. Kailangan hindi rin yun maka sa sa safety niya at nung kanyang mga co-workers, ng mga kliyente, and of course yung, for example, yung public if they if they are uh, dealing with a lot of ano, stakeholders. The fitness to work of workers found to have mental health conditions shall be determined by an occupational health physician after appropriate medical evaluation take into account the clearance provided by the mental health professional. So, for example, may worker na nag-leave o got a treatment, um, bago makabalik sa trabaho, yung fit to work, or bago makapagsimula ng trabaho, kailangan yung fit to work um, dinetermine after you know, proper medical evaluation by the uh, mental health professional. A worker may resume work while undergoing treatment, provided that uh, an occupational health physician has certified that he or she is fit for work and that current treatment shall not cause unsafe conditions for the worker while at work or cause similar unsafe conditions for other workers. To monitor and assist the workers in managing their condition, coordination shall be made within the occupational health, HR personnel, and the mental health professional in consideration of the workers assigned tasks and the effects of medications taken. Dito, um, I have one team member. Um, nag ano siya, nag counseling siya. So every time, may professional may, may leave. I think something happened na, na parang weekly, meron siyang sick leave. So syempre kung ikaw yung sa HR, ikaw yung boss niya, magtataka ka na, Parang bakit every week, ano, may sakit? Bakit, bakit gano'n? Hindi pa parang habit. So, ginawa namin, um, hindi siya namin ng, ano, ng notice to explain. No? Siyempre, that's unusual. So, after issuance ng notice to explain, that's when she approached me. Na, sabi nga niya. At hindi actually po, um, hindi ko po kasi masabi sa, ano, sa lahat. No? Uh, pero sa inyo po, sasabihin ko po na, ano, papa consult po ako kasi ako meron po akong um, schedule weekly ito po yung pangalan ng akong doktor ito po yung current medication na tinitake ko kasi ko I was um, clinically diagnosed with depression so ginawa ko of course uh, 
instead na ano kinausap ko yung HR manager um, well, let's just put it on record na sick talaga let's not question anyway um nag uh, ng proof na may may concern na inaasikas kung ano man yung details don of course hindi ko na diniskas but um at least magbigay ng due consideration dun sa mga ganung bagay and workers who have undergone pharmacological and psychosocial intervention treatment and are evaluated by the occupational health physician to be fit to work shall not be prevented from returning to work or subjected to actions that may be construed as constructive dismissal from the service. So, um, Usually, uh, for example, if mayroong empleyado, nag-file ng leave, kaso napakatagal, di ba? or na treatment niya, um, hindi, hindi advisable, for example, sabi ng kanyang doktor, hindi advisable to be exposed in a stressful situation, for example, sa trabaho. And kailangan ng totally makapag-rest yung mind para maging um, mas mabilis siyang maka, ano, maka-recover from the from the uh, concern ng mental health niya. Um, usually, um, it needs arrangement also with the with the manager. Kasi syempre, sabi ko nga, ang trabaho, hindi mo rin naman pwedeng um, pabayaan. Kung halimbawa, magtitik ng leave yung employee na may problema, who will uh, do the job na, na para sa kanya. Of course, maapektuhan din yung, yung company. So, uh, kailangan, but of course, yung worker or yung empleyado, mas kailangan ma-prioritize yung health niya. But before mo payagan bumalik sa trabaho, kailangan meron na siyang ano, fit to work. Kasi meron din naman kaming case before na excuse, yung employee, um, dahil nga naubos na yung leave, <clears throat> so wala nang uh, si sweldohin, nagpupumilit na bumalik na sa trabaho. Pero upon um, consultation namin dun sa kanyang doktor, hindi pa siya advised to, or hindi pa siya fit na, na bumalik sa work. So, hindi rin namin um, hinayaan, no? hindi rin namin hinayaan na, na makabalik sa work. Pero, tinulungan namin na maka, <clears throat> since meron namang record medically, na makapag-process uh, ng sickness benefit sa SSS. So, may mga gano'n namang um, may mga gano'n namang uh, accommodation na, na pwede ibigay or parang assistance na pwede ibigay sa sa isang empleyado na may mental health concern. So, a worker shall not be terminated from work on the basis of actual perceived or suspected mental health condition unless the condition progresses to such severity that it affects his or her own safety or safety of co-workers and work performance and productivity upon certification issued by a competent public health authority with expertise on mental health. So, hindi mo siya pwedeng i-terminate lang dahil lang, for example, um, <clears throat> um, na diagnosed with a, with a concern on, on mental health or <clears throat> undergo ng, ng treatment, counseling, it cannot be the basis of termination. Actually, um, sa labor, ang requirement, if you will terminate someone due to illness, kailangan merong certification ng <clears throat> government doctor that the illness is not, um, or it cannot be cured within six months. So, pwede mong i-terminate due to that. Yun kailangan yung requirement. Then, um, this confidentiality, uh, there must be a company policy on confidentiality. It must be clearly communicated and understood by all workers. Yung uh, diniscuss natin na advanced directive prepared by the worker with mental health condition shall form part of the 201 file and again treated with utmost confidentiality. Yung ibang mga kumpanya, um, pre-employment, they have this neuropsychological test as additional requirement. No? Kailangan yun, um, treated then with, with confidentiality. 
And of course, yung access to personal data or any information relating to workers' mental health condition bound by the rules of confidentiality and of course, by our Data Privacy Act. Now, with respect to disclosure, kailan pwedeng i-disclose? Sabi natin, di ba? Um, confidential. So, pero sabi ko nga rin, um, in every general rule naman, there's always an exception. Um, so, workers or employees encouraged to disclose their medical health or mental health condition for purposes of reasonable accommodation. So, gaya nga nung nasabi ko, yung aking team member, no? Na... Uh, napilitan siya or inano niya, dinisclose niya sa akin for me to be able to provide arrangements no? or uh, mag-extend ng, ng leeway sa kanya for that weekly filing ng, ng leave. So, employers and co-workers shall not be obliged to reveal to third party um, any information about the worker with mental health condition except in any of the following conditions uh, unless it is required by law um, unless uh, it's disclosed with consent from the worker unless there's a life-threatening emergency case where such disclosure is necessary to prevent the harm or injury to himself or herself or to other person and if the disclosure is required in connection with an administrative civil or criminal case against a mental health professional or worker or for negligence or breach of professional ethics. So these are the instances when <clears throat> the the, ano, the worker or the employer may be compelled or obliged to, to reveal to another person information about the worker's mental health condition. So uh, ni lay down din ng, ng Dole Department uh, advisory kailan lang pwedeng i-disclose, no? Now, work accommodation and work arrangement. Agreements on work accommodation and work arrangements for a worker with mental health condition shall be made within management and um, workers' representatives. Again, ang requirement, dapat hindi maka maka-apekto or it shall not prevent the worker from performing the requirements of the job or it, it should not endanger his or her safety or that of his co-workers, clients, or the public. Um, the measures to accommodate and support a worker with mental health conditions, such as uh, flexible leave arrangements, rescheduling of working hours, and arrangements to return to work, must be clearly explained to the worker preferably in the presence of his or her family member. But usually, um, kasi yung worker or yung employee sometimes, sila na rin nagre-request eh, na parang um, huwag ipaalam sa pamilya. So, nasa sa HR naman yun, o sa, um, sa safety and health um, officer, kung kung sa assessment mo hindi naman uh, that serious or that get that grave na kailangang ano yung sitwasyon ipaalam sa pamilya for example um, the employee is already seeking professional help take naman ng medicines and all so kung kung halimbawa ka gustuhan niya na magpaalam sa pamilya niya kailangan natin yung ano irespeto no the worker may be allowed to return to work with reasonable accommodation and other such arrangements as determined as, or as recommended by the mental health professional and concurred with by the occupational health physician. So, work policies, kailangan din merong ano, monitoring and evaluation ng changes sa behavior ng, ng worker na pwede maka-apekto sa kanyang ano, work performance. For example, um, if he's been, the employee's been hitting the target, for example, if it's a sales, no, and then suddenly may decline, or um, dati yung empleyado um, participative sa mga meeting, then suddenly parang walang pakialam, or yung empleyado um, dati responsive, then suddenly um, nagbago yung behavior, so kailangan merong merong ganon may merong um, 
monitoring and at the same time initiative to check on the employee what causes the the change in the behavior or attitude so sa hr we sometimes encourage yung mga managers also to be no to be <clears throat> sensitive minsan kasi nasa pakiramdaman yan and ako naniniwala ako na as a manager uh your concern is not only with respect to the work that they do but um importante din na kilalanin mo yung ano yung empleyado mo yung team member mo um actually uh like sa amin pre covid no pre covid what we do since the work starts at 10 every other monday so twice a month we have this coffee session what we do meron kami of course yung papabru ako ng kape tapos pwedeng minsan pandesal may palaman or yung uh, may magsasaing may magdadala ng ng <clears throat> scrambled egg may tosino may nongganisa may tapa yung simpleng breakfast lang and usually nag nagpipick kami ng topic na um, it can be what what you think is your greatest achievement in life ano yung yung uh, kung hindi ka ito yung trabaho mo ngayon ano yung sa palagay mo na sa field of profession ka so from there makikilala mo rin yung empleyado mo like from from that um mga incident na gano'n or yung mga sessions namin aming coffee sessions doon ka nalaman na tatlo sa team na kasama doon um working student pala yung breadwinner pala so malaking ano malaking bagay because um yung experiences nila and yung background nila sa buhay doon mo rin makikita ano yung drive nila sa pagtatrabaho or for example um meron pa lang issue on you know, self esteem na minsan nakikita mo yung empleyado may malaking potential sa very articulate and all pero parang nahihiya or ano. so dun mo makikita dun mo rin ma, ma- figure out sa ang aspeto ka pwedeng makatulong sa ang pwedeng ka aspeto ka pwedeng mag-provide ng support sa sa kanila no now this treatment rehabilitation and referral system so, mental health workplace policies and program shall include capacity for treatment or referral procedure for treatment and rehab to be provided by the employer through the company's workers assistance program or any other program that will provide access to mental health services. Um, kailangan din, uh, yung workers with mental health condition shall be referred to a DOH licensed accredited recognized mental health facility or mental health service providers for appropriate management. Then the absence of workers undergoing treatment and rehabilitation shall be charged against their leave credits or um, they may utilize other regulated leaves, no? If applicable lang naman. Without um, prejudice to the existing company policy on availment of leave. Pero if, for example, naubos na yung leave credits niya, then the medical leave shall be without pay. Ang kaibahan nga lang, of course, the leave will not be will, will not be taken against the, the employee or the worker. It, the leave will be considered as authorized leave. However, the company naman, eh, hindi obligado na, ano, na mag, mag-provide ng leave with pay doon sa, doon sa employee na na merong um, mental health condition. And um, sa company, um, in the absence of uh, required uh, occupational health personnel, so the safety officer or HR personnel shall facilitate referral of a worker who is at risk or with mental health condition for medical evaluation and or intervention. So sa amin, um, one employee um, tried to ano, tried to or sinasabi niya uh, na gusto niyang mag-suicide and all. So, ang pinakausap ko since yung aking HR manager no, um, at the same time he is a safety officer and may background kasi nurse siya. May, 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 may background sa, sa medical field. So, siya yung pinag-assist ko pinahanap namin ng ng ano ng ng psychiatrist na pwedeng tumingin doon sa empleyado 
and eventually we we found out na ang ang reason pala is ano nagkaroon ng heartbreak kaya pala ganun so we allowed the employee to take a leave while undergoing treatment pero in eventually yung employee na rin yung nagresign saying na um mas ma um kakabuti daw sa kanya kung totally wala rin daw siyang ibang iniisip muna kundi mag mag-heal so maka get over doon sa nangyari so nag ano pinayagan din namin um mag mag, mag resign um without any requirement na ng ng rendering period kasi usually when someone resigns we require a 30 day period na for turnover and all so ito because of the condition kasama yun sa sa accommodation Now, um, benefits and compensation. So, in determining the appropriate compensation for the treatment and rehabilitation, so, ano yung current health benefit packages ng PhilHealth, ng SSS, kung ano man yung applicable, yun yung um, usually in-extend ng company. Um, they are entitled as well to monetary and non-monetary statutory benefits. However, this is... Um, dependent kung ano yung existing company policy um, and rules no on on this uh, benefit so nasa sa company yun kung halimbawa um, meron talaga silang budget to provide assistance para sa sa ganitong um, empleyado na merong concern on mental health pero um hindi siya ano hindi siya mandatory for 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 every company na kailangan magkaroon ka ng budget na kapag uh, for example yung worker nag-file ng ng leave due to this mental health condition na kailangan um bayaran mo yung mga araw na ano kung halimbawa um, naubos na yung leave credits niya no uh, companies engaging services of third-party healthcare provider encouraged to include mental health services in their health packages. So, nabanggit ko nga last time, um, yung mga kumpanya na merong um, HMO, no, they can negotiate to include um, these um, mental health care packages sa kanilang um, HMO. No? So, sa amin, uh, sabi ko nga, um, with IntelliCare, parang we will be adding a 400 peso um, premium do sa premium na binabayaran, which will entitle us to a 30 minutes uh, na phone session. So, masyadong pricey yun. Pero, ayun, if ever naman, um, pending ano, ng management because we're still looking for options, but ang ano kasi ang HMO naman kasi um sagot ng company so kasama siya sa benefit so <clears throat> yun nga sabi ng dole ini encourage nila yung yung mga companies to include mental health services dun sa mga ganong HMO packages no now uh what are the responsibilities of employers so, number one, develop, implement, monitor, and evaluate mental health workplace policies and programs. Number two, develop and implement programs with reporting mechanisms to address and prevent problems in bullying, such as cyberbullying, verbal, sexual, and physical harassment, so all forms of work-related violence. Um, so, ito, um, yung reporting mechanism, uh, usually sa mga company, yung um usually yung pag nag-report ng ganitong incident of course you protect the the ano the whistleblower yung, yung nag-report ng incident you protect them from from uh, the ano syempre yung, yung mga yung mga uh, harassment or bullying ng mga uh, ka kasama kasamahan nila empleyado so yung open door policy, mga ganon na usually sa HR kung may concern, the employees can just come in and freely uh, discuss and ano, uh, tell or report to the HR kung mayroong mga ganitong incident or for example pag set up ng grievance committee where they can um, send uh, incident report 
So, yun, kasama yun, yung pagkakaroon ng mga reporting mechanism. So, employer must also ensure that there are adequate resources to implement and sustain mental health workplace programs. Um, sabi nga, kailangan necessary training for the occupational safety and health personnel and the HR officers. Kailangan din ng necessary work accommodation when needed. As discussed kanina, no? So, kailangan may mechanism din for referral of workers at risk of developing or with mental health condition for appropriate management. And, of course, yung kailangan, of course, compliant with all the requirements of existing legislation and guidelines that related sa Mental Health Care Act. Of course, hindi lang naman yung, ano, hindi lang naman yung employers yung merong responsibilities, no? Kailangan din yung workers, syempre, mag-actively participate doon sa implementation ng workplace policies and programs. Number two, uh, kung meron silang co-workers na at risk or may pinagdadaan ng mental health condition, to ano, provide assistance in any form to improve the condition. And of course, avoid yung discriminatory acts na bilang isang empleyado. Uh, meron kang responsibility na kung halimbawa nalaman mo yung isang kasamahan mo uh, may pinagdadaanan or uh, nag-undergo ng counseling treatment, huwag ka na mag-chismis, huwag mo nang siraan, huwag mo nang ipagsabi. Yung mga bagay na yun. Malaking, ano yun, malaking maitutulong mo na bilang isang uh, empleyado. So, kailangan kasama yun sa kanyang responsibility. Otherwise, pwede siyang ireklamo sa HR. Diba? Sabi nga dito, um, it must be ano, yung empleyado na may pinagdadaan ng uh, mental health condition, yung um, treatment and yung uh, situation niya, it must be treated with utmost confidentiality. Number three, uh, workers shall seek assistance from the company occupational safety and health personnel on conditions which may be related to or may result to a mental health condition for their appropriate medical intervention and possible work arrangement or accommodation. And sabi nga natin, ayun, uh, may responsibility na sila mismo to not engage in cyberbullying, um, harassment, and all forms of you know, work-related violence and stress, and shaming. You know, and, so usually, sa mga opisina, yun yung um, marami, yung uh, chismis-chismis na pag uh, lunch break. Masisimula yan sa, uy, alam mo ba, uy, huwag mo sasabihin, uy, atin-atin lang, parang naikwento na sa, sa lahat. So, bawal yun kasi, again, bawal lang shaming. And at the same time, para maiwasan magkaroon ng um, discrimination and stigmatization, na baka mas maka-worsen pa o mas makalala pa. Pag na nakatulong ka na doon sa kapwa mo, empleyado na may mental health condition, mas makalala pa o mas, mag, mas, ma, mas makasama pa sa kanya. So, mas mabuti na, ano, na kung maganda, uh, irespeto natin kung ano man yung, ano, yung pinagdadaanan nung, ano, noong ating kasamahan na, na merong concern on mental health. Um, this mental health workplace policy and program, uh, this is a responsibility of the employer. And itong uh, policy and program na to, it must be reviewed and evaluated annually or as necessary to ensure na effective implementation and of course yung compliance. No? Um, and actually itong itong workplace policy and program, sinasubmit ito doon sa Dolly Regional Office. Like, for example, uh, here, mga companies dito sa Dolly NCR. Kasi in terms of, ano, in terms of um, compliance and enforcement, it's the Dolly Regional Office uh, na nag enforce nito through the, um, the Basic Occupational Safety and Health Act. So, um, ang maganda lang sa DOLE kasi uh, they're quick to formulate policy and at the same time, 
they have means as well to check on the implementation because of the dolly audits that they conduct. And usually, the month prompt yung mga companies to to ano to submit. Ang magiging hikita ko lang na concern jan is um of course na yung pandemic um with the ano eh, with with the situation hindi naman lahat ng company um blessed to no, to remain afloat marami yung nagkaroon ng um reduced work days or yung may mga nag off yung yung ano yung uncertainty rin na nararamdaman ng mga empleyado how will it be like for the coming months so kaya mas tumataas yung incident ng may problema sa mental health so uh yun kailangan yung HR no HR must be sensitive proactive and at the same time equipped to ano to uh provide support to ano employees so this ano uh, this concludes the lecture on or the part 2 of this Philippine Mental Health Act so I hope uh, again somehow may natutunan tayo sa session ngayong hapon ang ano ko lang request ko lang sa lahat um, again if we can disseminate the hotline number yung sa 24/7 crisis hotline because we'll never know by at least yung ating social media magamit natin sa tama by sharing the correct information and um, makatulong rin tayo sa public awareness on on mental health care that this um, crisis had thing exist and uh, wish ko sa lahat and I pray you know, that everyone to be safe and healthy and I wish everyone a happy Wednesday uh, just always remember that to support the you know the programs of YWCA because really um, with the view of having a healthy body mind and spirit um, because uh, why really cares for you okay thank you again and I think we are good to proceed with the Q&A Yes, thank you so much, Attorney uh, Attorney Gayona, for the very informative talk. And it's really good to know more about the Philippine mental health law. Yes, and I'm sure that all our, our, our participants already have questions in their mind for later. Um, we would like to remind everyone to please feel free to write your questions in the chat box. Um, also, but before we proceed with our open forum, Okay, let's have a short uh, break. And while uh, we are having a short break, we would like to share an audio and video presentation of the YWCA movement and its advocacy to create safe space for women. So let's all watch this. As part of a movement with more than 150 years of experience working directly with women and girls, the YWCA movement aligned its program and activities along with the World YWCA strategic goals to ensure that women, young women, and girls are at the center of their own empowerment and that no one was left behind. For the past 150 years, YWCAs around the world have expanded safe spaces to reach over 25 million women, young women and girls in 120 countries. Providing safe spaces to women and girls in the heart of local communities has been a core activity for the Young Women's Christian Association since its founding in 1855 in London and 1926 in the Philippines. The YWCA is also committed to programs on social and economic justice through action and advocacy and service delivery. What makes the YWCA unique is that our program and services are combined with our advocacy to create impact to women, young women and girls' lives and generate institutional change. The YWCA of the Philippines headquarters is very visible and accessible. It is located in the heart of Metro Manila and it provides shelter to affected women, young women and girls in an emergency situation and critical times where safety and privacy are assured. 
Leadership and Participation The YWCA is committed to empower women, young women, and girls by providing trainings, seminar, and the like to fully equip them in decision-making and bring positive changes in the community. Leadership development and participation opportunities will provide them a chance to equip themselves essential skills and positive transformation. Accurate and reliable information. Young women and girls trust the association because of reliable data and information that they can acknowledge and agree on. Reliability is considered as one of the good assets of the association, especially in disseminating information that are verified and true from trusted resources to protect women and young women to be a victim of violence in a virtual setting. What's very important for Christians to understand is it's not a question of you not praying or not praying enough. This is an actual sickness and I want you to understand that you are not being punished by God. We are here to preserve the life of people. Yung mga tao na di depress, yung mga tao may sakit. So, alam nyo po, kapag kami bigay tayo ng hope, mas humahaba ang buhay ng taong may sakit. Mas lagi silang gumagaling, hindi because of the medication. It's because of the hope, the love that we are giving sa mga tao may sakit. Wala pa po talagang nag-drugs na gumanda ang buhay. So bakit ka magagamit? Learn from that lesson. And if you want your future to become brighter, say no to sad. Smoking alcohol and drugs. But just say no. Building Trust YWCA is open for every woman young women and girls to fulfill the association's goal to develop women as a leader and members in body, mind, and spirit. YWCA have been initiating programs and activities to help boost self-esteem with physical, social, intellectual, moral, and spiritual well-being of women and girls in accordance with the Christian ideals. Furthermore, to build the confidence of members, any sensitive cases or information are confidential in the association. Holistic Approach YWCA have been providing support to women, young women, and girls not just on mental, social, physical, emotional, but most especially their spiritual well-being. The organization is also integrating Christian values in all its programs and activities, and one of this is Bible Class for Young Children. It has created a huge impact in supporting leaders and members to engage in selfless Christian service through sharing of knowledge and wisdom, to educate and develop more responsible young people. Intergenerational Cooperation National YWCA prepare and develop women by seminars, conferences, and meetings for decision-making for responsible participation in all aspects of social, economic, political, and spiritual life, and this is to build and strengthen the institutional capacity of the movement. In line with the World YWCA, the National YWCA have policy making vested on 17 members with 25% young women in National Council headed by the President. Dignity and Respect YWCA provides opportunities to young women leaders to involve and participate 
participate in local and international trainings, conventions, and conferences to develop their knowledge and strengthen their leadership skills. Partnership and Accountability The National YWCA is linked with 100 countries around the world through World YWCA, whose headquarters is in Geneva, Switzerland. YWCA have partnership with other organizations like YMCA, GSP, BSP, NCWP, Renewable Energy Coalition, PhilCADSA, DepEd, and FAWO Philippines, to name a few. This is to extend the scope of the mission and vision of the organization to achieve with the same goals. Right, I hope you enjoyed the video presentation. This is actually simply uh, shows how the YWCA has been moving forward in creating safe spaces to the community. So I hope everyone was inspired on the works of the organization and has been doing to um, uplift uh, our women and young women and girls. So for those who are interested to be part of YWCA family, you may inquire on the, our YWCA page and you may also um, just uh, chat us here in Zoom. So moving on to the most awaited part of our program, it is my honor to introduce to you our moderator for the Open Forum. So, Ms. Franz um, finished Bachelor's of Science in Psychology with academic distinction at San Beda University and completed her Master of Science in Psychology major in Clinical Psychology at De La Salle University, Manila. Currently, she is working as a consulting uh, psychologist at Hillspace Psychological Clinic, Child Fam Possibilities, Health Cube Medical Clinic and Chief Administrative Officer of Smart Driving Corporation. A substantial portion of her strength lies in providing psychotherapy sessions to youth and young adults. She also facilitated psychological assessment to children in conflict with the law, applicants of government agency, children with special needs, and other age groups. Above all, she highly enjoys facilitating seminars, workshops, and leadership trainings to students, teachers, youth, as well as to senior citizens and corporate employees. In her practice, she is guided by a belief that the most useful asset of a person is not a head full of knowledge, but a heart full of love with ears open to listen and hands willing to help. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Mary Franz Gavino. Hello, good afternoon po. Good afternoon, YWCA family. Ayan, and, and, and I'm back. <laughs> Pero right now po, not as a speaker, but as your moderator. Lalong lali na po, uh, we thank you, uh, Attorney JB, for that insightful discussion. No, Ang dami nating natutunan, especially me, as a practicing psychologist, mas lumaling pa yung understanding ko with the mental health law, no, which is very relevant and ano, timely, diba? lalo na ngayon meron tayong pandemic. So actually, uh, I invite everybody to type in your questions and I'm, I will be very happy to uh, read uh, read them para masagot ng ating attorney. But if kunwari meron kayong mga na-miss questions before no, nung sa ating uh, conversation about anxiety, you can also type it in. So, I will be happy to answer them also. Ayan. Ako ang favorite takeaway ko with uh, the discussion of Attorney JB, yung HR programs, no, na pwede palang iba-ibang uh, activities na magawa. I'm so uh, happy doon sa TikTok, no, na parang may mga ganoong engagement levels with the employees. Very, very nice. And also, yung mga vouchers, even though maliit lang yung halaga niya, but then, 
pag kapag pinapamigay with the employees parang uh, priceless na yung yung appreciation de ba na binibigay with the employee very favorite ko rin yung reasonable accommodations that we give no so especially right now na different yung set up natin with the pandemic and so and finally fa- pinaka favorite ko is yung boundary ng work and dress to so sabi nga ni attorney siya nga nagki drama <laughs> de ba <laughs> so why not tayo din de ba to take some rest ayan so attorney meron na tayong mga a few questions na na receive from our participants so uh first of all is what do you think po is the importance of the philippine mental health law and would it be beneficial to all talaga um Hi, Fran. So, again, um, I would like to thank Ateneri for the warm introduction. Truly, na, ano, my heart is full every time I am with my YWCA family. Uh, I started with YWCA and it really helped me um, in terms of confidence building. They've sent me to a lot of trainings and siguro just by being with them, knowing that um, someone has your back. Malaking bagay because I started way back college. So, yung training that I got, the leadership, confidence building, malaki yung naging contribution ng YWCA. And were it not for YWCA, I don't think uh, magiging madali for me to, you know, to achieve uh, certain milestones sa, sa career. And ayun nga, sabi ko, um, thank you. And kaya tayo nagkaroon ng part two. Nakita nyo naman kung gaano kahaba ang, ang discussion ng, ng Philippine Mental Health Act. And Um, salamat sa takeaway, Miss France. And to answer the the um, question, um, this Philippine Mental Health Act, I think it's, this is very crucial. This is very timely. Um, isa itong bagay na dapat nating um, ipagpasalamat na finally it's here. No, sabi ko nga before, it's baby steps. And malaki ang maitutulong nito. Why? Because as you can see, there are a lot of services that will be made available. Which means kung may batas, may IRR, isasama to sa budget. Kasi kadalasan naman, we have policies and programs. Ang problema, walang budget. Katulad na lang ng paglalagay ng mental health care professionals sa mga public schools na kailangan mandate yun, di ba? Malaking bagay rin na um, proactive ang dole. No? Kasi uh, sabi ko nga, without this Philippine Mental Health Act, hindi naman tayo magkakaroon ng, ng itong uh, workplace policy, itong labor advisory. And ito yung, yung binanggit natin kanina na 24-7 crisis hotline. This was launched um, purposely and primarily to address the, the demand of this IRR. So with that pa lang, although sabi ko nga, baby steps, malaki ang may tutulong ito sa, ano, sa ating lahat. Kasi um, yun naman, mental health naman, not necessarily meron ka pinagdadaanan. It's part of of you it's part of your well being so sab yung yung uh, readily available merong access no um malaking bagay yon uh, and i think there's a lot of um, improvement pa siguro kasi uh yung feel health no hindi pa nila na adjust yung provision nila in terms of uh limit nung nung allowance na pwedeng makuha ng empleyado but uh little steps But I see na once fully operational everyone, kung makikita ninyo, lahat ng aspeto ng society from the barangay level, from the LGU provincial level, sa educational institution, sa um, opisina, lahat tulong-tulong yung community. So this Philippine Mental Health Act, this will be really um, a big help for, for everyone. Thank you for that, Attorney JB. That's true, no? Kasi because of the law, parang mas lalo na po tayong uh, nakikilala yung mental health, no? That it is present, hindi lang siya basta-basta, no? And I think it will really be beneficial kasi siguro some people would think na another gastos na naman yan with the company or with the institution. But really, how can you have a productive, for example, work environment if your employee, di ba, do not, if your employees do not have a uh, Uh, good mental health. So, I think I agree with you, Attorney JD, talagang beneficial siya for everyone. Ayan. And having said that, um, may another question po is, uh, it was discussed that there are mental health facilities available because of the law. Are, the, are these services free, including medication? Do you know something about it, 
attorney. <laughs> Oo, gaya ng nabanggit natin, dito, dito tayo may pagkukulang. <laughs> Kasi yung PhilHealth yeah. Benefit, um, as discussed nga, um, may only cover those na kailangan admit but currently yung um yung yung consultation yung sessions hindi pa siya covered ng field health ang ni-require ng field health is ko cover namin kung under the premise na ma-admit sa isang um, facility or mental health institution yung ating service user or yung ating patient and yung uh, 45 days allowance lang yung parang value factor when you uh, provide that benefit so hindi pa rin sasapat di ba uh, with respect to SSS naman, um, sabi ko nga, yung SSS um, sickness benefit, pwede nilang i-avail. But, of course, before you can avail of that, kailangan merong pang ano, supporting documents. Hindi pwede na um, may pinagdadaanan ako, may ano, na parang uh, self-diagnose, mag- magkiklaim ako, hindi po pwede. So, currently, um, since hindi pa fully operational yung mga health um, care facilities, sa mga provinces or cluster ng municipalities hindi pa siya um, ganun ka ano ka accessible sa lahat kasi it entails cost sabi ko nga even companies um yung aming um, um HMO no so nag-inquire kami it's a 400 peso i-add sa premium and that will only entitle us to a 30 minutes uh, phone um consultation so hindi siya sapat kasi walang follow through so sa, sa palagay ko ngayon um, because our government and ano hindi pa niya natututukan ng 100% itong itong Philippine Mental Health Act or yung uh, mental health facility sa atin um dahil because of the covid situation uh, hindi pa na achieve na ng Philippine Mental Health Act yung yung free um accessible and affordable na mental health care services yeah, yung, medyo yun yung sad reality natin. But then, sabi nga ni Attorney JB, baby steps, no? At least we are going there, no? Doon sa ganong policy. Just to add also, pero din po tayong mga nag offer ng, for example, if you need uh, free therapy sessions or they try to customize it yung price based on the SES of the client. Siguro yung sa ating mga uh, Philippine Mental Health Association o kaya yung ating NCNH. So, they also offer those services uh, ng, yung iba ginagawa nilang free or yung iba naman at a very uh, low cost no para ma-cater yung ating uh, yung ating mga fellow men. So I think uh, meron din tayo sa UST but then yun lang medyo mahaba yung listahan but then no uh, let's make an effort at least this ano uh, naman parang at least this is for free and we can maximize it. So uh, and also I think yung mga hotlines natin ganun din siya walang bayad no so you can reach them out no whenever you are in trouble or you need someone to talk to. And okay, so the next question po after JB is, um, what are the sanctions of a company who did not comply on dole mandated mental health policy program, most especially during this pandemic, especially for the work from home arrangement? Mayroon po bang mga sanction na ano dito, mag, parang makukomit or ma, makukuha ng, ng company? Um, this uh, workplace policy and program, sabi ko nga kanina, you need to submit it to the regional office no, kung saan located yung, yung inyong kumpanya, inyong opisina. Um, usually, if ever there's a complaint being filed, um, papatawag yan ng, ng Dolly Regional Office for a conference or mandatory conference. So, pagpaliwanagin or minsan magpapadala ng inspector to go to the offices. Um, ngayon nga lang na na karamihan kasi work from home like sa amin work will we'll be working from home until the time it's safe to go out doon you know? so um, nasa ano na lang yun kasi may monthly reporting din eh yung Occupational Safety and Health Committee may monthly reporting may monthly meeting so kailangan isubmit din namin siya otherwise um, mapipenalize kami sa compliance part but usually kung magkaroon mga kasi na violation may liwa yung gobyerno ibibigay sila ng period for you to comply and to show your proof na talagang nag-comply ka na. So, yun ang ano, yun ang protocol ngayon, no? For for ano, for um dole compliance in case na di, di, in relation dito sa um DO208 na to. 
I see. Is is this applicable also at the attorney with um public sector kasi sabi po ni Sir Edgardo parang is applicable only to private sector is there a way that a public sector be covered also with uh DO CSC JMC 2020 on occupational safety and health um ito kasi yung department uh of labor advisory na to this um dole advisory it's applicable only to the private sector because I believe yung public sector, those na nasa gobyerno, covered ng civil service rules. So, kung ano yung, kung ano yung um, issuance ng civil service tungkol sa how you, you know, um, manage and supervise yung um, mga empleyado ng gobyerno, yun yung mag apply This DOLE is, DOLE advisory is purposely for private companies lamang. I see. Okay po. Mayor, no? So, at least siguro po may uh, pwede pang other accommodations that uh, they can apply. No, Siguro all we need to do, for example, lalo na ngayon that we are struggling with um, this setup, this new normal setup, I think we can convey it to our team leaders or to our managers kung saan ba tayo nahirapan para at least they can make adjustment o kaya they can help us uh, finding uh, facilities who can help us na uh, in this in this time of pandemic. Ayan. Actually, okay. if oh, I may uh, add, oh, yes, okay. uh, actually, yes, if okay. I may add, no, kasi based on our um, experience, no, yung mga empleyado, of course, um, kaya nata- tumataas yung cases ng may concern sa mental health care or mental health. Um, it's because yung ibang companies, hindi sila transparent with what is really going on inside. Kasi yun yung ano eh, kung empleyado ka, yun yung maiisip mo, what's, what will happen to me? Um, secure pa ba ang aking employment sa mga susunod na buwan? So it's important also for companies to be transparent. What is the current state of the company? They can do that by, for example, holding town hall or um, may reporting or um, the head of the company can talk to the managers and from the managers, they can disseminate naman yung information sa sa mga team members nila because it's important, no? Yung peace of mind, makalma ka man lang na uh, hanggang end of the year, meron akong trabaho, hanggang first quarter of 2021, okay naman kami. Oo, merong mga, merong mga pinagdaadaanan ng kumpanya, pero kaya naman. So, ma- mahalaga yon Pangalawa, sabi ko nga, um, kailangan creative din yung company in um, coming up with um, policies and programs. Lahat ng employee engagement, um, kailangan talaga may, ano, may may input ka sa manggagaling sa empleyado rin. Kailangan mo siyang i-engage to, no, to take their mind off things sa mga bagay na ganun. And um, sa akin, naniniwala ako na yung yung company this this during this time, challenging maging HR kasi syempre bukod sa naka-work from home, kailangan mag-ano ka rin ng paraan paano mo ma-touch base o ma-reach out yung mga ano yung mga empleyado you can do it for example by by scheduling a uh, like a touch base call um sampu sampu every day so at least you get to talk to them kasi kung hindi mo naman kung hihintayin mo sila na mag-approach sa yo uh, most likely mahihiya sila or pangalawa um hindi nila ma maiisip or at least maramdaman nila that they're welcome um, they're free to you know, to open things up with you kung ano man yung concern nila, be it sa trabaho, um, be it sa, sa, ano, sa concern sa pamilya. So, malaking bagay yun. That the, sabi ko nga, the HR should be proactive, should be sensitive, and at the same time, um, kailangan ng ano, uh, learning experience as well. Matuto ng iba't ibang paraan kung papaano uh, maka, maabot yung mga empleyado nila during this time. Yeah, that's very true, Attorney JB, no? Talagang kailangan ng big adjustment din, talagang, ano, kasi we really need to reach out to them as well kasi tama po kayo kapag meron tayong mental health concern or meron tayong uh, problema na nararamdaman madalas parang kinakahiya natin yun. Pero if there is someone 
who can tell us na, no, it's okay, I'm willing to listen. Malaking bagay po yun. Lalong-lalo na if um, yung taong yun nasa top management o kaya nasa HR. So, uh, it's really a big thing. No? Meron po tayong question dito na in the light of COVID, Dolly issued an order that COVID testing is to be shouldered by the company. However, since not all companies can shoulder the testing, they opted not to have their employee report to work to prevent getting the disease. What if, because of this, the employee suffered from mental health issue, thinking of the loss of income and how to feed their families? Is there a legal violation of the law in this, attorney? Um, actually, uh, that's new. That means, ang sabi lang naman ng Dole, um, if ever, wag mong i-require or i-require ng kumpanya na magkaroon, for example, ng back to work, kailangan magpa-test kayo lahat. Wag mong ipasagot sa ano sa sa empleyado. Pero hindi naman mandatory na kailangan um, yung employer ang mag-shoulder noong noong ano nung testing, no? Nung, nung swab testing or nung noong uh, ito, rapid testing, no? So if for that reason yun yung pinaka main main cause um, hindi ako um, I don't think that's enough uh, basis to go after the company for liability kasi syempre uh, ano yun eh um, sabi ko nga kailangan kung merong mental health condition kailangan it must be ano it must be clinically diagnosed so tingnan din natin kung anong sasabihin ng mental health care professional is it the only reason kung bakit ano kung bakit nagkaroon ng um, ng ng ganung uh, problema kasi kung halimbawa naman ang naging dahilan is or ang ang, ang kinaka um, pino problema ng empleyado is yung um, loss of um, income um, kung matatandaan natin merong mga mga um, assistance na binigay ang gobyerno like yung Dole Camp so they gave out 5000 um, meron yung um, sa SSS na yung um, um, 8,000 or 16,000 na binamigay nila for two tranches. Kung magkaroon naman ng unemployment, ganun din may unemployment benefit sa, sa SSS. Ang ano kasi, uh, kung mapapansin nyo, siguro, siguro, sometimes when you read issue one says ng gobyerno, ang mga material na salita dyan is yung shall, meaning mandatory, may or encourage if, uh, pag sinabi natin may or encourage, sinasabi lang ng, ng gobyerno na baka naman pwede nyo gawin para sa mga empleyado nyo. Pero usually kasi, hindi, hindi mo rin naman mapipilit yung, ano eh, yung, yung kumpanya. Uh, ang, pinap, ang pinupush talaga ng Dole is kung magre-require kayo ng empleyado to be back sa trabaho, of, una, kailangan yung opisina nyo handa. Merong uh, kompleto sa protocol. Distancing. Mag, maglagay kayo ng mga signages, ng alcohol, ng mga mat. Uh, mag-observe ng yung mga policy sa pantry na bawal ang um, gathering and all. So, mag-provide kayo ng shuttle. But is, to, kung specific sa isang tao, um, sa palagay ko, hindi rin magiging fair para sa kumpanya kasi kailangan din natin isipin na kung halimbawa ang empleyado mo sa isang kumpanya, um, like 3,000 employees, kung bawat isa, ganun ang magiging, ano, syempre, kailangan yung balansihin ng kumpanya yung capacity niya. Otherwise, um, the company will, ano, will fold up. Mas marami yung maa-apektuhan. Okay. Thank you for that, attorney. Opo, no? Talagang in this pandemic, uh, kailangan magtulungan tayo. Siguro, what I can tell to this uh, participant natin who asked this question, maybe you can um, talk to your manager or to your boss no, na how to help para makapagparapid testing ka, makapagpaswab test, kasi maybe they can um, give some allowance like salary deduction ba yan? No? Parang uh, may magkaroon ba ng ganoong parang uh, meet halfway kayo ni uh, nung, nung employee Lawyer, no? So that, kasi syempre, of course, it could it could be ano eh, parang possible aspect of uh, na ma-affect yung ating mental health. Pero just like what Attorney JB said, no, kailangan balance natin lahat and then i-consider din yung different aspects para at least 
hindi lahat tayo apektado, lahat tayo lilibog. Do you want to add something, attorney? Sa amin, oo. Sa amin, uh, what we did as well to to address the situation, kasi syempre during the time na, na nagsimula itong um, pandemic, so not everyone naman um, nakapag-report sa work, even if work from home. So una, uh, we've advanced yung 13th month pay, so malaking bagay yon. Pangalawa, of course, uh, kung halimbawa yung empleyado um, diagnosed to be positive or kailangan ima-isolate, kailangan unang tingnan is can the work still be done sa bahay? So, yung adoption ng flexible work arrangement, malaking bagay yon. So, dapat yung employer, um, like sa amin, may nagpadala kami ng mga, ng mga laptops, yung mga desktop, pinauwi din providing kami ng mga ano internet yung uh, modem yung, yung wifi so nilolooda na lang so kailangan yung yung company why hindi mo maibigay diretso na okay sige sasagutin ko yung testing mo pero bigyan mo siya ng other other um, alternative no win-win solution bakit win-win solution yung empleyado hindi naman kasi lahat ng nakaka nagkakasakit ng covid hindi na nakakapagtrabaho. Yung iba naman, um, asymptomatic. They just need an isolation. So, hindi makakapunta ng opisina. But, but of course, you can do a work from home. Kung, kung pwede naman, di ba? Bakit naman hindi? So, tingnan natin yung mga other flexible working arrangement na pwede doon sa empleyado. Pangalawa, um, meron kaming mga empleyado na kailangan mo lang rin kasi alamin yung ano, for example, saan siya nakatira? Ano ba yung mga beneficyo ng LGU niya? Um, nagbibigay ba ng suporta yung LGU kung halimbawa uh, meron sa isang constituent nila um, na diagnosed ng, ng ano na COVID positive we we, we did that kami yung, instead na yung empleyado yung naglink doon sa LGU actually ng tagig so instead na yung empleyado pa yung kumontak sa ano sa sa LGU ng tagig we did that for for the employee so at least makapag-establish ka ng linkage no so pinigay na namin yung form and all then yung yung LGU siya na lang kumontak doon sa sa ano sa employee kasi yung mga yung mga LGU naman yung may mga budget sila may mga provision na nagbibigay ng ano ng vitamins nagmo-monitor nagche-check um yung ibang LGU rin nagpapa ano nag uh, may free na na ano sinasagot nila yung testing so so siguro ang kumpanya hindi hindi kailangan lang rin talaga you really you know find ways to help the the employee not just by not just by ano by monetary na bibigay ko sa iyo o ito na uh, dahil hindi ka nakakapasok babayaran kita para sa araw to there are so many ways na para ano para makatulong doon sa empleyado na um sinabi natin na ano na covid positive kahit yung pagkamusta araw-araw yung yung may nakakausap yung uh, the fact na tinatago mo or you keep confidential yung condition noong ng empleyado nyo. Malaking bagay yon. So, at least when they report back to work, hindi, yun nga, ma- walang discrimination, walang ano na, oh, si ano na gano'n, iwasan natin. Walang mga gano'n. So, so, to sum it all, ay nga, um, the, the company can extend help and assistance, um, be it uh, monetary or non-monetary na, na assistance. As long as, ang importante naman, maparamdam mo dun sa empleyado na, na with all your means no and your manpower nandun ka para sa para sa kanya. Yeah, ayan. Thank you. Thank you so much attorney no. Napakaganda doon kasi tama naman sabi nga, 'di ba? Kung gusto, maraming paraan. Pag ayaw, maraming dahilan. So, at least we can always find ways, 'di ba, how to help each other. And ganun parehas tayong magtutulungan. Ayan. Punta naman tayo attorney with the youth. May question po tayo dito as mentioned. Uh, youth are the most affected on the impact of COVID pandemic. Will mental health Health be prioritized at school as initial plan by DepEd, and uh, how and what are the measures and guidelines? Meron po ba kayo dito ng kanting knowledge attorney? Um, naghahanap ako actually, nagresearch ako ng issue once ng DepEd already for, for in relation to uh, Philippine Mental Health Act, but um, uh, wala pa ako nakakam across, no so ang ang sinabi kasi ng IRR kailangan i-introduce sa ano sa curriculum ng at every ano um, educational level so actually sa IRR nilagay doon preschool 
mula preschool hanggang ano, sa lahat ng antas ng edukasyon, kailangan mong i-integrate o introduce yung um, this Mental Health Care Act. Ang, ang aspeto naman kasi ng mental health care, hindi lang tungkol dun sa mga uh, depression, suicide. So sabi ko nga, it's, nandun din yung wellness uh, promotion. So um, sa ngayon, hindi pa siya, sa palagi ko, hindi pa siya specific na policy or wala pang nakakam up si DepEd na directly for for mental health but but there are similar programs and policies already being implemented by DepEd na nakakatulong sa for ano for mental health care 'di ba kasi hindi naman na bago yung ano yung mga wellness promotion eh ang ano lang bigyan natin din sila ng ano bigyan din natin sila ng chance kasi kung mapapansin nyo, nasa hot nasa hot seat din naman na na even the ano the online classes no parang um, it's a big adjustment of course uh, yung inga kawalan ng ano ng, ng ng gadgets ng tools to use internet provision and um, may mga nagpo-post or nagba-viral pa na yung too much assignments being given doon sa doon sa mga bata parang lalong nakakadagdag doon sa kanilang ano um, pinagdadaanan no? so sa akin uh, sa palagi ko ay nga uh, wala pang direktang ano uh, step by step no na na policy or programa dito but there are already existing programs na nakakatulong naman sa sa ano sa mental health na dati pang pinapatupad na ng, ng DepEd Ayan. Thank you for that, Attorney JB. Siguro I can speak a little bit of um about it kasi I was be, uh, I was a part po of their DepEd um program kung saan meron silang uh, parang online learning session. So meron kami before na buklatan and meron kami tinatawag for the high school naman is uh, OKK Tambayan. So in there we discuss mental health issues. Parang we relate some um some stories to on sa, sa situation na uh, related to the mental health of children. I think yung tama si Attorney JB. Walang direct na nagsasabing this is the guidelines, but they are doing something about it because I also heard na they are training the teachers kung paano um uh, facilitate yung mental health concern of their students no ganun din sa different private um schools they they prepare the counselors the teachers on how they can um help their students lalo na ngayon na different yung setup natin no um prone to everything pwedeng mangyari kung ano-anong bagay but then um yun siguro po maybe for for the participant who asked this question maybe kung meron tayong anak uh, we can ask um their your ano yung kanyang teacher or yung counselor on how is the setup kung ano ba yung uh, how can your child reach out para sa mental health help na kanyang makukuha from the school having this new setup so all we need to do is really to ask no i think uh attorney yun lang po ang mga questions ng ating participants so thank you very very much po for for entertaining all these questions ayan salamat po and siguro pa i will just leave with the uh, uh, ano, before I go, siguro, sasabi ko lang po, always remember to be, sabi nga nila, in this world where, where we can be anything, choose to be kind. And especially, be kind to yourself, no? lalong-lalo ng ating mental health. Thank you, Attorney JB, and thank you po, YWCA. Thank you, Miss France. Thank you, Miss France. God bless. You, France. God bless. Yeah. Stay healthy, always. Stay healthy po. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Mary Friends and Attorney JB for your efforts in answering all the questions and concerns from our participants. And also to those um, uh, participants who send their questions. And now for the presentation of tokens and gifts to our speaker and moderator. Once again, may I call on our National Executive Director, Ms. Nerisa Lien. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jessica. Again, Ms. Marie, thank you. Attorney JB, thank you for very enlightening afternoon for all of us. Uh, so, YWCA, medyo yung wellness areas and other things. Uh, since pagkabata, talagang tinuturo. Have you seen the, the video? We started uh, the 
Zoom Bible class during a time of the pan- pandemic. And it also prepares young children to be ready for the online schooling. And even in the remote areas in Iloilo, we were able to facilitate the Zoom Bible class for almost 40 children. Na isa lang yung gadget nila, pero nandun sila lahat. And siguro nakatulong talaga sa kanila kasi nagsasayawan pa every time magtuturo na ng dance. Anyway, to present our simple token, of course, sa uh, aming minamahal na si JB. And of course, ang bago nating member ng YWCA na si Miss Marie. Uh, JB, kasama na natin siya sa Y. Officially, wow, last welcome. time, we're, member we're na siya. Happy. Yeah. So, I would like to read the citation. The Young Women's Christian Association of the Philippines and the National Youth Coordinating Council in partnership with Hill Space Psychological Clinic and Amara Counseling and Training Center present this Certificate of Appreciation to Attorney J.B. Rosen G. Gayona for her invaluable contribution as a resource person which led to the success of the White Talk series on understanding the Philippine Mental Health Law, RA 11036 Part 2, held on October 7, 2020 via Zoom. Signed by Marla May Baez, NYCC President, yours truly, and signed by the National President, Lilia A. Parinas. Thank you so much and congratulations again, JB. We're so <laughs> proud of you for your promotion. Blow out! <laughs> It was <laughs> ano, it was an unexpected blessing. I guess um since I've practiced, you know, gratitude, simple gratitude every day. Parang blessings really are pouring in. Siguro yung hindi ka naghahanap, basta pagpasalamat mo lang yung mga lahat ng bagay na nangyayari sa araw-araw. Be it pagmulat ng mata mo, thank you Lord. Kakain ka, thank you Lord. Lahat ng bagay, parang you you find, you know, gratitude. Magugulat ka na lang. So it's it's really unexpected because it's the first time that we are having that position in ano in uh in the Philippines and malaki yung contribution ng why because um our company is really a male dominated leadership so in the core management i'm the only ano <laughs> rose among the thorns and sabi ko nga kanina nag-message ako sa ano sa iyo Ateneri um salamat for the token and ano but really uh, hindi mo na kailangan magpadala masamang tumanggi sa blessing but really that's too much because uh, more than the This is my simple way of giving back to YWCA. Ano ba naman yung makatulong tayo? Kasi lagi rin naman ako naniniwala na parang when you're blessed, uh, that's uh, another reason for you na maging blessing ka rin sa, ano, sa ibang tao. Yes. By love, serve one another. Di ba? The next uh, citation uh, is given to Miss Marie France A. Gabino, registered psychologist for his Invaluable contribution as moderator. Alam na ni Miss Franz kung ano yung mga sidelights of paano tayo napunta. <laughs> may ano yan, may konti kami secret dyan. Which led to the success of White Talk Series on Understanding the Philippine Mental Health Law. Part 2. Held on October 7, 2020 by Zoom. Signed by Miss Marla May Baez, NYCC President, yours truly, and Miss Lilia Parinas, the National President. Thank you so much, uh, Miss Marie. Uh, ganun talaga sa wine. Hindi ba? Pero training yan, part na training. <laughs> thank, oh, you so much, thank you po, so much. Anytime po, anytime. Thank you po. Of course, God bless some tokens, uh, small tokens to remember the YWCA. Diba po? Salamat uh, po. May mga, <laughs> ano na kayo, dalagyan na na. <laughs> thank you so much. And of course, about yung mga participants at yung mga nagsigil ng questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you. And to officially close our webinar today, let us uh, listen to Ms. Uh, Maria Corazon Francisco, Vice President for Administration and Management. Good afternoon, everyone. We express our deepest gratitude to everyone who attended the webinar this afternoon. From the insights we gain on the topic discussed by our resource speaker, Attorney Javier Michel Deona, about the Philippine Mental Health Law, RA 11036, we hope that it will lead us to a better physical and mental health awareness and a better quality of life. Thank you so much. Stay safe and God bless us all. Hashtag Y Cares for You. 
Thank you so much, Ms. Uh, MC. Now, um, before we uh, bid goodbye, may I ask everyone to turn on their camera so that we have photo op. Ayan po sa Zoom. You may turn on po your camera. Ayan. And uh, ayan. dalawang shots po tayo kasi medyo dalawang pages po. Ano? So, smile na po tayo. And ready na po. One, two, three, smile. Ayan. Okay, wait lang po. Isa pa po. Ayan. Okay po. Game po. One, two, three, smile. Alright. Thank you so much po sa mga nag-participate and for um, mga questions, uh, just a few announcements po. Um, we will be, there's a link uh, na share na po sa chat box yung uh, for evaluation so that your the e-certificate will be sent out to you po. And for those uh, who inquire or willing, I mean, interested to be part of YWCA, we have also a link um, in the chat box for the membership form. So may you may also fill in. Then this video will be also posted in YWCA page. So um, you may just feel free to visit our YWCA page Facebook page and um, so that you can also review it po. Also, we all, um, this Why Talk series is more on talk about the mental. So we will uh, also have programs lined up or webinars lined up for the upcoming um, weeks. So for more details, just um, ano lang po kayo sa aming FB page. So again, I think that's uh, all for today today so again we would like to thank uh, to thank each and everyone po uh, for attending and actively participating in today's why talk series on and on understanding the philippine mental health law also known as the republic act 11036 so we hope you have learned a lot from today's forum with the hashtag why cares for you so stay safe and god bless us all Thank you. Bye.